Hi, my name's Garrick. I'm a music therapist from the UK. Now, hopefully you're here after watching my first video in this Music Therapist Learn series. Um, the first video was uh, me covering uh, Beyond's Group Dynamics, a review, his uh, 1952 paper um, about his theories about uh, sort of group formation, group dynamics in, in group therapy. Uh, and you can find that video here. In this video, we're going to be covering the chapter written by J.D. Sutherland in the 1990 book, The Social Engagement of Social Science, a Tavistock Anthology, Volume 1. Uh, very catchy and concise title. This was written in 1990, so it's about 30 years after Beyond published experiences of group therapy and other papers. So it's really interesting to see a more modern perspective, even though it's not very modern now, we're again another 30 years on Beyond's work and uh, sort of the thoughts therein. So I hope you enjoy the video. It's a little bit shorter than the Beyond one. Um, and there is one more uh, video in the series to come, which is us looking at a music therapy case study uh, with like this Beyond's perspective lens on it, uh, even though Beyond isn't really invoked in the case study writing anyway. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you soon. I think we're going to have a crack at this one. And what we'll do is we'll do start end and jump around to see if there's anything super interesting going on. First page and a half, two pages. Last page and a half. Uh, Beyond's account of his first experience of his experiences with groups falls into two parts. The first contains a description of his method of work, the phenomena uh, following its use, and the tentative theories he evolved to understand them. Uh, while he regards his views as an extension of Freud, his whole thinking has quite a distinctive character. In experiences of groups, he refers to two groups, each with a different task as perceived by the members at the start. In one, composed of non-patients, the accepted aim was to study group behaviour. In the other, the members were patients seeking help from a medical clinic. After an interview, the psychiatrist explained to each prospective patient that an understanding of his conflicts and personal relationships could help in the amelioration of his symptoms. Such understanding was facilitated by meeting in a group in which relations could be studied as they developed. To be on the use of his approach, one in which the sole activity of the leader or therapist is to make interpretations of phenomena in the group as these develop, made any difference between the two groups irrelevant. The different expectations of members in the opening phase, however, are reflected in the groups. In fact, his main references are to the therapeutic groups in which a strictly group-centered stance is stressed. Just as a, as a general sort of um, holistic takeaway, group expectations are quite important. And depending on what your group is for, depending on sort of your general aim or goals for the group, what you want that group to uh, facilitate for clients, um, may not be represented in the expectations of the attendees. The attendees might, your, your, the clients, your, your uh, group participants may have different, wildly different expectations. Um, especially with like stuff like open groups, they're very hard to set expectations and because they're open, um, the you don't have the consistency of group members uh, week on week or session on session, which means you're constantly trying to manage expectations of the group. Beyond's approach here isn't affected by the expectations of the members of the group. Actually, part of Beyond's approach feels like um, highlighting the expectations and questioning why those expectations exist or raising the question of why those expectations exist when the therapist uh, hasn't verbally set those expectations, right? A psychoanalytic approach permitted the exposure of unrecognized, irrational and powerful relationships that were specific to a group situation. Bean was explicit on the highly subjective nature of his method, especially in its use of counter-transference feelings and in the detection of processes of projective identification wherein the therapist picks up the feelings of members through what he senses they are projecting onto him. 
As in psychoanalysis, the observer learns to attend to two levels of mental activity, the manifest conscious and the latent subconscious and unconscious. It is its subjectivity that arouses so much antipathy in those who consider that scientific research into human relationships can, uh, can rest only on behavioral data. Nevertheless, that he had described something that illuminated the depths of group phenomena was clear from the remarkably rapid and widespread interest in his observations. There was little doubt that his work had made a profound stir in the new field of group dynamics. So what does this tell us? Bion is using countertransference to um, work with what the group is projecting onto him, or the therapist uses countertransference to uh, identify uh, what's going on, uh, the conscious manifestation and the subconscious slash unconscious drives behind it through countertransference and then uh, reflect that verbally in interpretation. Or it doesn't feel like it's taking a complex look at the kind of interpersonal relationships between group members. Maybe it goes into that. Maybe it's not commenting on that right now. Beyond's theory is all about identifying how the group, well, part of the theory is about how the group looks for leaders. Your dependency leader, your fight flight leader, your pairing le leaders. And I, I guess that that would be uh, interpersonal, you know, taking a look at interpersonal relationships between members of the groups. The mental activity required to further the task must be a particular kind because judgments about the nature and origin of actual phenomena and actions designed to overcome difficulties presented by them have to be tested against constant interaction with reality. In short, as opposed to any magical solutions, it must involve rational thinking with consequent learning and development ego activity. It is this capacity to sustain task-focused activity that the unorganized group greatly alters through the persistent interference from competing mental activities associated in Beyond's view with powerful emotional drives. These conflicting forces at first seem to have little in common except to oppose the task by creating a group that would satisfy the emotional needs of members as these become prominent. This isn't guesswork and magic. Beyond's approach to group dynamics is similar to that of like uh, working one uh, working one to one with the client in a psychoanalytic way. It's the bringing to consciousness the behaviors or maybe associations that's, that are going on. That's the consequent learning and then development, um, which would be your actualization. The state of the group beyond term the group mentality and the way in which it might express itself to find a leader he described as the group culture. These concepts, however, he soon found did not clarify su sufficiently what his further experience perceived, namely patterns of behavior that grips the group into re a relatively specific group mentality in opposition to the work activity. Uh, beyond name these pattern assumption, uh, basic assumptions of which he identified dependence, fight flight and pairing, which we've talked about. That's the opening. Let's drop down. Here's a good stop. The disadvantages of groups as a therapeutic medium are well known. They do, however, have, sim have several advantages. The sharing of humiliations, shame and guilt is a different experience for many when they receive sympathetic understanding from other members. Also, whereas the projective identification of self-objects from the segregated system systems has to be done mainly one at a time with a therapeutic pair, the projection of several around members of the group is active much all of the time and their recognition can be used by all. So this was one of the really cool things that I, I enjoyed about the theory of group work. Unconscious behaviors and unconscious symbolism and unconscious like associations happen so much more easily when you're surrounded by lots of people, especially when you're in dialogue or you're in relation to these people. Everyone does it. This isn't just a people who need to go to therapy do this. This is a like literally every person does this, but it's so much more interesting or it's so much faster paced or it can be faster paced or it's easier to really pull up on when it's happening in front of you. Um, Let's say, uh, you've got a group where 
one person i'm gonna f- just completely fabricate something for the sake of talking about this uh you've got one person uh person a who has the therapist in some sort of parental role let's, let's say the therapist is a parental role they're a figure of authority and they are liked loved um they they their positive feelings projected onto the therapist in their familial parental role and you have person b who is very let's go with sort of um aggressive towards the therapist it, it doesn't matter so much but maybe they don't like the authority they feel the therapist holds and person a does not like person b doing that right but these relationships playing out in real time you're able to highlight this right as person b uh comments that the therapist's interpretation is ridiculous or stupid and person a pipes up and says uh i can't yeah i can't believe you'd say that to them um they're they're the one that they're the smart one here they're, they're not the 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 patient in this group and you can dive deeper into what's going on there um in real time whereas when you're in one-to-one therapy um you're really relying on the client to bring forward everything you're really relying on the cues that your client gives about interactions they're having with other people is if you're dealing with like relationships outside of the therapy room you're you're relying on the client to bring a lot of information about their interactions and relationships with other people the individual in psychotherapy has to learn about his his or her split off relationships this task can become a lifelong one for any individual therapy as in other learning as in other learning has to give enough capacity to carry on the work psychotherapy in groups has to make much more of a contribution to this capacity then can be done through confining attention solely to group dynamics equated with basic assumptions. It's saying that group therapy, the the kinds of relation, the the relationships that are dealt with in group therapy, do not constitute all the relationships or all of the, uh, yeah, all of the relationships that that a client might have in their life. Um, the group therapy is not a total replacement for one to one therapy because it can't facilitate engaging with all all of the relationships that might be uh split or uh damaged or interesting or or generally just something to pay attention to um that could be brought up in individual therapy i think that's what this is going for so it's not a replacement it's just a different medium so here this is suggesting that uh folks um maybe did a bit more uh in terms of group work and group theory development um Foltz was convinced the total group interactions had to be used in therapy and i believe that beyond had he done much more group th- therapeutic work would have accepted that position though he would have insisted on what might loosely put as more rigor and more depth more attention to the primitive relationships okay it does seem that beyond's theories um i think yeah this this puts it quite well is beyond's theories puts a lot of stock in these primitive relationships um the the really basic like subconscious drive stuff ezreal's formulation 1950 of using a common tension in the group once it could be identified as coming from the wish for a specific relationship with the therapist and adding to its exposure by showing how each individual dealt with it was considered to be more appropriate revisiting both led me to conclude that ezreal's views could not account for the group dynamics in general and i believe our understanding of the individual should be such as to account for both it has seemed to me for some years that theory of the organization of the self is the emerging task for psychoanalysis and so i use my own rather rough and ready gropings in this direction analytic group psychotherapy has usually been considered by its users as a val- valuable therapeutic medium in spite of the negative findings of milan and his colleagues uh, 1976 Perhaps we expose here the inadequacies in our concepts of the nature of psychotherapy as well as our meaning, means of assessing change. Because of my interest in the skill as an independent variable in the therapeutic task, Gil and I, 1970, carried out an exploratory trial using spontaneous sentences as an indication of conflicts within uh, self system. Significant changes in patients after 18 months of treatment were found. So, Manus' criteria seem to have referred to different processes. 
For me, Beyond has always been the Preu Chevalier, making his doughty forays into the confused tangles of psychoanalytic thought and the complexities of human relationship. His power to look at phenomena with fresh challenges remains a permanent questioning legacy. It seems like uh, if people wanted to do more jumping into group dynamics and group theory, um, then Fuchs and Ezreal uh, are two names that are worth exploring. Thanks for watching the video. If you found this helpful or enjoyed learning along with me, then uh, please feel free to like, uh, drop a comment, even subscribe if you want. I stream on Twitch on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7.45 p.m. Uh, GMT UTC, so that's UK time. And if you have any questions or you want to suggest any topics, then feel free to uh, drop a comment in the in the comments or in the Twitch chat, or you can uh, find me on Twitter at GarrickW6. Thanks again, and I will see you next time.